Hey everyone, welcome back. If you've been following our anime diff tutorials, you've already witnessed the power of transforming text prompts and videos into stunning animations. To unlock the full potential of anime diff, I am creating a video series that will show all the functionalities of anime diff in very detail. In this first video, we will show the basic use of anime diff using text to video and describe the different options of the anime diff apply model node so you can get as much as possible from it. This video will be very detailed, but I hope it is a good guide for you when you want to create animations with anime diff. We will follow in great detail the information and instructions provided in the anime diff evolved repository. The link is in the description and can be consulted there. The repository contains explanations of the installation, the features of anime diff, and how to use the nodes. I hope that the practical demonstrations shown help you in further getting most of the value from anime diff. To start in Comfy UI, in the Anime Diff Evolve page, go to the samples. We will use the text to image example. Drag the workflow image and drop it over the Comfy UI canvas. The workflow should then appear. If you do not have Anime Diff Evolved installed, the red message with missing custom nodes will appear. To know how to install the custom nodes, check out this short video, link on the card. The Animated Diff workflow works as follows. The checkpoint model is loaded with the load checkpoint node. We will change it to Rev Animated. The clip is connected to the prompts, same as image generation workflows. We change the positive prompt and use one girl, solo, blonde hair, listening to music, smiling, cyberpunk, anime style, very detailed, high quality. In the negative, and not suitable for work, they are connected to the case sampler. We keep the default settings. The checkpoint model is connected to the animated if loader, which has a motion module model. Motion modules transform stable diffusion checkpoints into animation generators. Motion modules trained with real world videos are used to do this transformation. The empty latent defines the resolution and the length of the video. With SD 1.5 models, we will use 512 by 512 pixels video resolution. The batch size is 16, which determined the number of frames. The primitive is the seed used in the case sampler. We will change it for 1, 2, 3, 4. With all these settings, we can already render the animation. The latent output of the case sampler is connected to a VE decoder, and this to the video combine node where we can see the final animation. We will not save the result. Change the format to H264 MP4 and run the workflow. Easily we have created our first anime diff video. Like when creating images, we can change the settings to make a different video. Let's try with a different prompt. Add at the beach in the positive. Change the seed to 1111 and the scheduler to DDM Uniform. So far, so good. The basic use of anime diff is not very different than generating stable diffusion images in Comfy UI. As you can see, the anime diff loaders show us a large number of possible inputs. The motion model and beta schedule are parameters. This is a generation one node, which is good to apply in most of the cases. Generation 2 was made to give more flexibility to the workflow. In the GitHub you can see what the differences are. They are not a lot, to be honest, but I will use the Generation 2 nodes for the rest of the tutorial. Add the use Evolve Sampling node, which contains some of the inputs, but not all, of the Generation 1 node. Next, add the Apply Animate Diff Model Advanced node, and connect it to the model input of Evolve Sampling. Third, Add the animate diff model loader and connect it to the motion model. Finally, connect the checkpoint to the evolved sampling and this to the case sampler. Delete now the generation 1 animate diff apply loader node. The first thing we can do is to change the motion model. These are models that have been trained differently. In the GitHub of animate diff evolved, you have a description of some of the possible motion models but there are even more, and more will appear. In this first video of the series, we will not go through all of them. We will look into more detail into the different animation modules in next videos. 
If you still want to experiment, check the documentation of the models to know what are the right settings to use. These models need to be installed, and the easiest way is to do it via the manager and install models. Just search for Animate Diff, and you will find many of them. We will now test the different model, MMSD V15 V2, and see the results. As you see, a different animation with the same settings has been generated. The different models have different characteristics. Because each model has been trained differently, each one needs a specific beta schedule. The default option is to use Auto Select, which selects automatically the right beta scheduler for the motion module. If the beta schedule is changed, the animation will be different. Let's change the Auto Select schedule, which is the square root linear, to the average of the square root and linear. In this case we are lucky and we do not see much difference, but there is some. The mouth is not the same and it looks a little bit more blurry. If you change it for a very different beta schedule, it could be that you cannot even run the workflow. Or it could be that the rendering is totally off. So use the right beta schedule depending on the motion module, but feel free to experiment. Put back the beta schedule to auto select and connect the motion LoRa input to the animate diff LoRa loader. There are eight motion LoRa options. These influence the camera movement according to the strength value. The motion LoRa's need also to be installed, and you can do that through the manager in the same way we installed the motion modules. In this case, look for the motion LoRa types. Let's choose the zoom out LoRa and test it. The render has a zoom out effect. See that there is a watermark in the video. This is because the original Animate Diff models and LoRa's were trained with Shutterstock videos, and the watermark appears. They tend to disappear when the strength of the movement is reduced. Let's try with a strength of 0.7. Now there is no watermark effect, the strength the zooming out effect stands out less. With other models, there will not be also watermark effect, but the motion LoRa's cannot be utilized for all motion models. Recently there have been developments to train motion LoRa's. However, we will explore the use of these tools in other videos of the series. Motion LoRa's can also be concatenated. For example, connect a second motion LoRa loader and use rolling anti-clockwise. Check out the result. A new animation combining both motion LoRa's is created. The sum of the strengths of both motion LoRa's is more than one, so the watermark appears again. While this is limited to version 2 models, there is potential to use other tools which we will explore in next videos. The next input we can play with is the scale multival. Previously called motion scale, it influences the amount of motion generated by the model. So when the value is low, there will be small to no movement, and when the value is high, it will be more dynamic. There are two nodes we can use, Multival Dynamic and Multival Scaled Mask. Let's start with the first and try to increase the movement by applying a float value of 1.2. The generated animation now has more movement, both of the girl and the background. The float value though, cannot be varied a lot. If we increase it to 1.6, the animation loses consistency and a lot of strange artifacts appear. If we reduce by a little to 0.9, the movement is reduced significantly. And even more if we reduce it to a value like 0.4. To use the multi-val dynamic node with masks, Let's first obtain the silhouette of the lady. Let's generate the original animation again, but now connected with an image preview node. Copy the first image in the clip space. Add a load image node and paste the image from the clip space. Add the one former Coco segmenter. Add color to mask and change the colors to red 220, green 20, 
Blue 60. Set the threshold to zero. Add a grow mask with blur node. Expand by 20 pixels. Change also the blur radius to eight. Looks good. So we apply the mask to the multi-valve dynamic node. As you see in the result, the movement is only applied to the mask. The non-masked area remains blurry. We can apply a background using the reference image as a latent. Connect the image to a VAE encode node. Connect the VAE and use a repeat latent batch with 16 frames. Connect then the output latent to the case sampler. For this test, increase the float value to 1.4. We get now an animation with a fixed background, taken from the starting image, and a more dynamic subject. With masks, we can also use the multi-val scaled mask. This node allows customization of the scale based in the dark and light tones in the areas of gray masks. The degree of movement is defined in the range of the minimum and maximum. If we use absolute scale, the 100% black areas will have the minimum value movement, and the 100% white areas the maximum value. In the gray areas, the value that will be taken will be the interpolated value determined by the intensity of the gray, between the minimum and the maximum. When the scale is relative, instead of 100% black and 100% white, the minimum value is taken in the area of the mask which is the darkest, and the maximum takes the pixels which are the lightest. This is easier to understand if we see it with an example. Let's add a gradient mask. Set the size of the mask to 512 by 512 and the number of frames to 1. The mask we have created goes to 100% white on the left, to 100% black on the right. In the middle, the value of the gray is 50% white and 50% black. Let's set the minimum value to 0.4 and the maximum value to 1.6 and run the workflow. The resulting animation looks weird, but shows the effect of the mask. The left part, with more white, moves a lot. On the right, with dark tones, it does not move. Right in the middle, with a gray 50% black and 50% white, the scale value is the average of 1.6 and 0.4, which is 1. The next input we can use is effect multival. The amount of effect determines what is the influence of the motion model over the sampling process. So with a value of zero, it would be as running the case sampler without animate diff. Let's see this more clear with an example. Duplicate the case sampler, V decode and video combine nodes. Use control C to copy and the control shift V to paste to keep the connections. To this case sampler, now we are going to connect directly the checkpoint loader. So we render frames without animate diff. Connect the multival dynamic node to the effect multival input in the apply animate diff model advanced node. Remove the mask. Change the float value to zero. Let's run the workflow to generate the animation. The case sampler without animate diff has created 16 different images resulting from batching 16 latents. Let's see now what will be the result for the animate diff loaded case sampler. Both samplers have generated the same images. With a value of zero in multival effect, there is no influence of animate diff in the sampling. Let's increase the value to 0 0.8. Now, the animation is more consistent than before, but we can still see some flicker. Let's try now with a float value of 1.2. The animation seems to be more consistent, but at the expense of some movement, if we compare with the original animation. The combination of scale multival with effect multival is possible. Connect the previous multival scaled mask to the animate diff apply node. Change the minimum to 1 and the maximum to 1.2. The result is nice, with quite some movement of the lady. 
We can also use masks to apply the effect multivale. Disconnect first the multivale scaled mask from the apply animate diff node. Then, connect the face mask to the multivale dynamic node. Change the float value to 1 and run the workflow. The effect multivale is applied to the mask we have defined, but we can see that in the non-masked area, the background is changing continuously. The background images have been diffused, but the motion module has not been applied in that area. If we try to apply the encoded image as a latent, as we did for the scale multivale, the masked area gets this new latent, but the background still keeps changing. Therefore, we need to find another way if we want to keep consistency on the background. Let's first reconnect the empty latent. Duplicate the apply animate diff advanced node. Connect the output model to the previous animate diff apply node. Connect the existing animate diff model to the new node. Duplicate the multival dynamic node, connect it to the new animate diff apply node, and now connect the inverted mask from the grow mask with blur node. With this, we will also render the animation in the background, but done separately from the person mask. Run the workflow and see the results. The final animation, as you see, is similar to the one with no mask. However, with two masks, two motion modules are applied independently, so the result is a different animation. Let's finish this part by testing the scaled node mask. Disconnect the previous model connection and connect the multival scaled mask node with the gradient mask to the apply animated if node. Reduce the minimum float value to 0.8 and run the workflow. The gradient mask is applied in the animation. The maximum value is used on the left, while the minimum on the right. Scale and effect values allows us to tune the extent motion module is applied in our animation. Next, we will show how to use animate diff keyframes. AD keyframes allow to schedule scale and effect multival. The scheduling is done in time steps. This means it is done during the sampling process, but better explained with some examples. Connect to AD keyframes node to the apply animated if model node. Simply connect now a multival dynamic node with a float value of 1 and run the workflow to see what happens. As expected, with the default value of 1 the animation is the same. Change now the multival value to 1.2 and run again. Make a copy of the video combine node to compare the results with the scale effect of 1.2. Add a multival dynamic node and connect to the scale multival input in the apply animated if model node. Change the float value to 1.2 and run the workflow. The result is an animation with a scale value which is too high. This is because both float values are multiplied. To prove that, change the dynamic value of the AD keyframe to 0.6 and the one of the apply node to 2. By multiplying these numbers, you should get a total scale value of 1.2. Run again the workflow and see the results. The new animation is exactly the same as the animation which had only one scale value and was set at 1.2. Obviously, if we swap the values, the resulting scale is also 1.2, and we will create the same animation again. Delete the multival dynamic node connected directly to the apply animate diff node. Change the float value of the AD keyframe node back to 1.2. Duplicate the two nodes and connect the new AD keyframe node and run the workflow. The animation has not changed, so we do not have this multiplying effect as we had before. Now, if we change the scale value to 2 and 0.6, the result will not either be a multiplication, an average, or a sum of the results. It works differently. To illustrate it, set back both scale values to 1.2. Add a K sampler advanced node and connect the same inputs as in the regular K sampler node. Make sure the parameters of the K sampler advanced are the same as the regular K sampler. Change the scheduler to DDM uniform and check that the leftover noise 
at the bottom, is disabled. Connect the case sampler to a VED code and video combined node and run the workflow to check the setup works. Good, the case sampler advanced with the same settings creates the same animation as the case sampler, which means connections are okay. If you observe the preview in the case samplers, you see that the image changes as the diffusion process progresses. What you see there is a preview of the first frame of the animation as the steps of the case sampler increase. In the case sampler advanced node, we define the start and end steps of the diffusion process. Change the end step to four. From the video, we see that the sampler has only run four steps out of 20. This is 20% of the total diffusion process. Let's break down the sampling process. Duplicate the existing case sampler advanced and check that all the connections are there. In this case, we need to connect again the model input. Duplicate the case sampler advanced again. This will do the remaining 16 steps. What we want is that this branch of advanced case samplers does the same as the regular case sampler. Enable the leftover noise in the first advanced case sampler, so it is transferred into the latent that goes to the second sampler. Connect the latents of both case samplers and disable the add noise to the second case sampler advanced. In the second case sampler, we will do from step 4 to step 20. Using 1000 at the end is the same as completing the total number of steps. If we run it, we can check this new branch of the workflow works as expected. The resulting animation is still the same, as we have yet not changed any parameter in animate diff. Change the start percent of the second AD keyframe to 0.2. For 20 total steps total, this is 4 steps. Change the scale effect to 0. The idea is that during the first 4 steps, the render takes a scale of 1.2, while for the following 16 steps until 20, the scale value is 0. However, we still have some guarantee steps. If there was an overlap in the start percentages, at least one step would be applied. For the moment, let's set them to 0. Now, run the workflow. In the preview of the regular case sampler, we observe that the image suddenly had a change when reaching step 4. The final result is a very static video, because we have rendered 80% of the animation at a scale of 0. In the advanced case sampler, we see that the first 4 steps define a moving scene, but after applying the next 16 steps with scale 0, the resulting animation is exactly the same as the one we have generated with the case sampler. Before, we set the guarantee steps to 0. However, if we indicate a value and the keyframe of the left has the same start percent, it will be executed the number of guarantee steps indicated. As example, let's set the first keyframe to 1. The change has no effect in the standard case sampler because the start percentage of the second keyframe is 0.2, or 4 steps. On the other hand, the second advanced case sampler does apply these 4 steps because it starts at 0.2. However, one step is guaranteed. The first step on this sampler is at a scale of 1.2. In total, both samplers do 5 steps with a scale of 1.2 and 15 at 0. The difference between renders is small, but it can be appreciated. Now, set the total number of steps in the first AD keyframe node to 4 and make sure that in the second the start percent is 0. This is equivalent at indicating that the first 20% will run with a scale of 1.2 and the rest will be at a scale of 0. The new animation is still the same. These examples illustrate how the AD keyframes nodes influence the diffusion process. This demo with a scale value of 0 is in the extreme but shows the flexibility of using keyframe scheduling. Imagine you like the character of the animation with a scale of 1.0, but you want some more movement. However, if we increase the scale to 1.2, the clothes, the position, and the background will change. What we can do is, for example, set the scale of the first keyframe to 1 and apply it in the first 30%. For the remaining 70%, we apply a factor of 1.4. What happens is that during the first part of the diffusion process, a base image similar to the one made before is created. Then, 
a higher scale value of 1.4 is applied to the rest of the diffusion process, resulting in an animation with more movement. As you see, by using 8D keyframes we can obtain a more dynamic animation reducing the changes in the character and the whole scene. To finalize the Apply Animate Diff Model Advanced Options, we see that we can change the start and end percent at which is applied. This is very similar at how is applied in ControlNet, or as it is done in Steps in Advanced Case Sampler. If we set the start percent at 0.3, the Animate Diff Motion Module is only influencing the last 70%. Because the first steps are more important, the resulting animation is mostly a sequence of images. However, if we start at 0 and end at 30%, we observe that the influence of the Animate Diff Motion model is higher. The image is still flickery, but there is still some consistency on the face of the lady. The control using the start and end of the Apply Animate Diff node can also be done by scheduling the sampler with AD keyframes and effect multival. If we connect two AD keyframes with the first at float value of 1 and a start of 0, and the second with a float value of 0 and a start percent of 0.3, the resulting animations are the same. Obviously, with AD keyframes even more steps and subdivisions can be applied, which makes the workflow more flexible, but also more complex. Anyway, today we have seen the basics of Animate Diff, and we have also seen in great detail how to use the different options in the Apply Animate Diff model. In the next video of this series, we will show how to better control the animations with prompt traveling, doing video to video and further controlling the output with ControlNet and IP adapter. We will also delve into the use of context options and sample settings to be able to create longer animations and improve the animation quality. Thanks for watching.